Jarrett Culver. He's had one heck of a year. Play with the chip, compete every single play. His game fits the NBA. He's a lottery pick, and I think he's going to be a top five or six pick. And he, he's a guy that is under the radar on being a truly great talent. Jarrett Culver, Big 12 Player of the Year, and the engine that led Texas Tech to a 31-7 record in a national championship appearance, leading the Red Raiders in points, rebounds, and assists at the ripe age of 20 years old. From a physical sense, Culver has some similarities to Nets combo guard Karis Levert. Although Culver has a more projectable frame at the same age, both stand close to 6'7", with a near 6'10 wingspan and underwhelming reaches. While not identical as players, Culver could play a Levert-like role early on in his career as a secondary shot creator. A former unheralded recruit out of Lubbock, Texas, Culver improved as much as any player in the country from his freshman to sophomore season, vaulting onto draft boards and into the top 10 conversation with his prototype size and do-it-all game. Given his college productivity, feel for the game, competitiveness, and reputation as a worker, Culver is the type of high floor prospect with the ingredients to, at the very least, develop into a quality NBA starter early on in his career. Culver's intrigue starts with his positional size at close to 6'7 with a proportionate frame and a 6'9 wingspan. He has great size for a guard and uses his height effectively to see over the top of smaller guards in order to find open teammates. Culver led Texas Tech and assists at 4.6 per 40 minutes, and his ability to scan the defense at 6'7 is a big reason why. Culver is also effective getting to mid-range pull-ups over guards and wing defenders alike. Even against 6'7, 210-pound RJ Barrett, Culver is able to rise over the top, in part because of the nature of his release. Functioning as basically a lead guard for the Red Raiders all season, smaller guards struggled to keep him out of the paint, with guys like 6'3 Jonah Matthews standing no chance here. He regularly uses spin moves to get to spots on the floor, and if he's able to function as a combo guard in the NBA, most players at that position figure to have similar issues keeping him out of the paint. Although only 194 pounds, Culver is a more physical driver than he looks, here bodying 6'8 Benny Boatwright to the rim. He's capable of finishing through contact and generated 6.7 free throws per 40 minutes, just ahead of projected number three pick RJ Barrett. Culver will also mix it up on the offensive glass, snagging 1.70 boards per 40 minutes at the guard spot. Culver shouldered a huge load as Texas Tech's primary shot generator in the half court last season, ranking 7th in ESPN's top 100 in usage. 27% of Culver's offense came out of pick and roll, and he's more than comfortable of operating in ball screens, especially when his pull-up is falling. He struggled from beyond the arc as the year went along, but he showed there's at least some potential for him to eventually knock down pick and roll pull up threes, especially when teams go under the screen, as Culver is a career 34.1% three point shooter, knocking down 1.9 threes per 40 minutes in 75 collegiate games. He has a long release, but decent overall touch and rotation. He's definitely most comfortable getting to mid range pull ups out of ball screens, using his size to rise over the top and even mixing in occasional step backs. Although he's not overly shifty, when Culver forces teams to go over ball screens, he's able to maneuver his way to the rim in a straight line, going to his right and his left. He does a nice job of changing speeds, keeping his defender on his hip and the big man guessing. His sheer size helps him stride it out to the rim versus drop coverages, and he loves to unleash spin moves past bigs in either direction. He's shown flashes of finesse finishes, and Culver also figures to look a little more explosive at the rim with NBA spacing especially given his positional size and length. While a capable pick and roll scorer, it's Culver's potential as a ball screen passer that makes him most interesting, generating optimism that he may be able to develop into more of a lead guard down the road. He can hit the roll man with well-timed lobs or whip passes over the top, again relying on his size and vision to hit athletic centers in stride. Culver has also shown the ability to locate shooters, even in the weak side corner with live dribble feeds. Should Culver slither past the big defender and get a piece of the paint, he has the wherewithal and feel to know when to drop the ball off to the big man for an easy finish. Pick and roll was by far his most used possession last season, but Culver's bread and butter comes as a triple threat scorer. He utilizes rip throughs and jab steps to create space before rising up for mid-range jumpers. Culver loves to get to one dribble pull-ups going to his left at a triple threat as 97 of his 243 jumpers came inside the paint. 
Because defenders are so used to that jab right, pull up left, he's able to play off of that with rip throughs, attacking to his right and freezing defenders on his way to the rim. Colbert does a great job of getting lower than his man on these rip throughs and is a solid finisher in traffic, finishing in the 66th percentile, despite being one of only 11 Division I players to attempt at least 195 shots at the rim in the half court. The pull up to his left and rip through drive to his right are staples in his triple threat package, but he also uses head fakes to get defenders in the air as you can see here, burning Cam Reddish on the left wing. Culver has a live dribble scoring package as well, so long as he's knocking down his pull-ups. Again, he's streaky, but he's at least shown some capability with pull-ups versus switches, here sizing up Jack White before splashing a three in his face. Then he uses hang dribbles to freeze defenders and get to mid-range pull-ups, stopping on a dime and rising up over the top of the defender. His release is far from picturesque, but he did rank in the 50th percentile on pull-ups last season, solid given his pedestrian three-point percentage. With Jack White having to respect his pull-up three here, Culver uses the hesitation to set up the blow-by and finish. If he can find some consistency with his pull-up, he'll look much more dynamic with the ball than he did at the collegiate level. Culver again is able to use a hesitation dribble going to his right before spinning back left for the finish, relying on his size in the process. He's not shifty or overly creative as a ball handler, but he does have potential on pull-ups and is fairly physical to the rim in a straight line off a live dribble. Lastly, Culver is most comfortable operating in the mid post, both as a scorer and a facilitator. He loves getting to right shoulder followaways against smaller defenders, even utilizing some dirk footwork in the process. Because he oftentimes shoots on the way down from deep, this is where his release is most natural and comfortable. He sets up these turnarounds with shoulder shakes and is capable of turning over his left shoulder on occasion as well. If he's matched up with a smaller guard like Kerwin Roach, he can use his physicality to get to the rim. If he has a combo forward like Brady Manick checking him, he relies on quick spins to get to the cup. He's an adept passer as well out of the post, and although not overly efficient, he has the three-level scoring potential and vision to eventually become a primary shot creator in the NBA. Culver is a sound positional defender who can sit down in a stance, contain penetration, and then go find a body and attack the defensive glass. Now, he's not quite the defender that his reputation suggests, as some rugged Jimmy Butler type that people often compare him to. But the foot speed, positional length, and technique is certainly there. Although his reach isn't great, his 6'9 half wingspan is above average for a combo guard, and he uses that length to bother shots in the paint as the primary defender if he gets beat, finishing his career averaging 0.8 blocks per 40 minutes. Culver also shows flashes of competitiveness and instincts off the ball. He can cover ground to get to shooters on closeouts and can be fairly disruptive in the passing lanes, even digging down on the post and hitting the floor for loose balls on occasion. Lastly, Culver is willing to stick his nose in and defensive rebound better than most players at his position, averaging 7.8 rebounds per 40 minutes while playing mostly the lead guard spot at Texas Tech. The fact that he's willing to do the little things will certainly help him see the floor early on in his NBA career as his shooting rounds out. Culver's labored on the way down shooting stroke has caused skepticism among NBA scouts in terms of just how much upside he truly has. It starts at the free throw line where he's a career 68.7% shooter with a pause at the top and a somewhat strained finish. Although effective in mid-range spots, Culver struggles when you stretch him out to three, especially off the catch, finishing in the 34th percentile in catch and shoot situations. Culver's mechanics break down when he doesn't have upward momentum into a shot as there's a slight hitch at the top of his release. He has a narrow base and struggled mightily when heavily contested. There's nothing natural about his stroke, and because he's far more comfortable with the ball in his hands, there are questions about how effective he'll be early on in his NBA career, as few teams are likely to hand him the ball as one of the lead shot creators. Once he misses one or two, Culver starts turning down rhythm catch-and-shoot threes all too often, leading to a catch-and-hold style of basketball. Because he has such a long release, he's easy to get off his spots and far too often settles for contested mid-range pull-ups rather than open spot-ups. He'll either catch and hold or panic dribble, not even looking at the rim on the catch and forcing drives into the paint, making him extremely predictable in the half court when the jumper isn't falling. 
While he shot 38% from three as a freshman, Culver's question marks as a shooter date back to his prep career and throughout last season. As a freshman, you can see how Culver's stroke was even longer, with a huge ball dip, narrow base, and long windup across the left side of his face. Culver spent the offseason tweaking a shot to get rid of that long windup, but saw his three-point percentage dip by over 8%, albeit on 17 more attempts in an expanded role. While he came out of the gate scorching, shooting over 45% from three over the first two months of the season, he only topped 30% once during the season's final four months, shooting seven for 31 from three in the NCAA tournament. He's far better off the dribble, hoisting twice as many pull-ups as spots, but Culver still has questions to answer in terms of his pull-up consistency and range. The key is to at least be able to punish under coverages and pick and roll. As you can see here, Culver shoots on the way down far too often, leading to a wide variety of misses. With his base so narrow and his feet basically touching, his on-the-move shooting is somewhat limited as well. Given the fact that he's quite ordinary unless he can develop into more of an on-ball player in the NBA, he'll have to become a much more consistent pull-up shooter because he had far too many possessions like this, dancing around with teams daring him to shoot before forcing up a contested shot in the paint. Simply put, how Culver progresses as a shooter will likely determine the type of career he'll have in the NBA. Although partially because of his streaky jumper, Culver had issues consistently getting by NBA caliber athletes in the half court. In fact, he feasted on lesser teams, shooting 60% from two in 11 games versus teams under 500, yet only 50% from two in 27 games against teams over 500. He's a decent straight line athlete, but Culver is a simple ball handler without much wiggle, resulting in far too many mid-range pull-ups. He plays a bit upright at times, in part because the ball slows him down. He lacks advanced combo moves and was able to make a living on straight line physicality in the NCAA that may not translate to the highest levels as seamless. He looks a bit unnatural trying to mix in hesitation crossovers as he's predictable with his moves, lowering his shoulder or having to kick out after failing to turn the corner. Although he ranked 8th in the NCAA in isolation efficiency among players with over 100 attempts, at this stage of his development, his handle suggests that he may be better off as a secondary ball handler at the NBA level. Often praised for his competitiveness on the number one defensive team in the country, Culver did have his troubles against bigger wings, and his 194-pound frame and 8-foot-4 standing reach project better against NBA 1s and 2s than the league's top forwards. As you can see here against R.J. Barrett, although Culver is in position, and this is far from an easy look, the 210-pound Barrett is able to shed the Red Raiders' guard on the way to the rim and finish. Given his reputation, Culver had a few more defensive miscues than you'd expect. Then against guards on the perimeter, he can open up his stance a bit too much, getting beat off the bounce. Culver's tools are good, not great, by NBA standards, especially if he ends up as more of a wing than a combo guard so his margin for error isn't quite as wide as it was at the collegiate level. He's not immune to mistakes off the ball either, ball watching at times or running into screens. Chris Beard does a great job of maximizing talent on both ends of the floor. His players compete defensively, but will Culver's motor be as consistently revved up away from his hometown of Lubbock and outside of Beard's system? I will be declaring for the 2019 NBA Drought. He leads their team, Texas Tech in points, rebounds, and assists. He deserves every inch that he's gotten. One of the guys that that improved the most, or at least asserted himself more than, than ever. There's a lot to like about him in this positionless NBA. Uh, there's a lot of things that he can do really well. Despite a productive season at the highest level of college basketball, Culver has his naysayers who question his shooting, ability to break down a set defense, and overall upside. Shooting 13 for 53 over his last three collegiate games didn't sway Culver's doubters, as some see him as a high floor prospect worthy of top five looks, while others see him as fairly ordinary. Described by some as too nice, does Culver have the talent level to justify hearing his name called in the top seven or eight of this year's draft, or should he be viewed as more of an eventual starter in the NBA? Even his biggest skeptics can't question his rate of improvement, production, and intangibles as one of the higher character prospects in the draft with everything in place to maximize his long-term potential. Culver brings a winning pedigree from day one, and he's the type of six foot seven shot creator that teams should covet in the past dribble shoot NBA.